Hello and welcome to Knights of Honor 2 Sovereign. Now, Knights of Honor 1 came out like 12 years ago and I was pretty excited when I saw uh, that this game was coming out. I had uh, been keeping my eye on it since, since the initial announcement and it seems like a very faithful recreation of what people liked in Knights of Honor 1. I personally didn't play Knights of Honor 1, I wasn't really a PC gamer back then. Uh, but I'm I'm liking what I'm seeing here, and I've got about seven and a half hours so far in the game. So we are going to be playing a little bit of it and seeing uh, if I can explain to you the various things that I've learned in the time that I've been playing. So I did a channel community post where I asked what country and such that we should be thinking of playing in the game and predictably, very predictably, you all basically chose for me to play Byzantium. Um, so we've got three start dates, although it really is just a setting rather than an actual, um, you know, grand strategy-esque, you know, days and weeks and years going by. Um, it is just a setting and, you know, in... 11.10, we've got a huge-ass Byzantium, which I have quite literally no interest in playing. Uh, I don't really want to play a huge country. The game's basically done. In 12.24, we have no Byzantium, because this is only 20 years after the 12.04 Fourth Crusade, which, well, burned Constantinople. It's a very sad time. Um... And so now instead we have the the Empire uh, of Nicaea. We could also uh, go for the 1360 start date, where Byzantium it's reconquered um, Constantinople, but it's pretty small, three provinces. Um, the Ottomans are a thing. It's very doable. It's very it's it's not the easiest game to play as Byzantium here, but it's doable. But then I learned that as Nicaea you can actually reform Byzantium. So that's what we're going to be doing. We're going to be taking Nicaea and forming Byzantium. That's the plan. That's what we're going to do. We've got a big rum right beside us. The Aeobids are pretty big and scary. Bulgaria is very big and scary. Uh, Germany is a thing and it's colossal. Hopefully that explodes. Uh, the, the hash lines basically means that these are vassals of um, Germany, just like Flanders is a vassal of France, uh, etc. we got a big England. But yes, as I said, we're going to be playing as Nicaea. We are Byzantine culture and Greek culture. Apparently, Byzantine culture is a thing. Maybe it's just Roman culture. Really, it should be called Roman Empire, but you, whatever, whatever. Uh, in the year 1204, the army of the Fourth Crusade invaded the city of Constantinople. Theodore I Lascaris, La uh, the son-in-law of Emperor Alexius III Angelos, was proclaimed emperor around that time. Realizing the situation in Constantinople was hopeless, he fled to the city of Nicaea in Bithynia. The Latin Empire was established in the former capital of the Byzantine Empire, but the ex-Crusaders had poor control over the former Byzantine territory. Three successor states of Byzantium arose, with Nicaea as the closest to the Latin Empire. It has the best position to attempt to re-establish the Byzantine Empire, and the best claim. Alright, that sounds pretty cool. Let's get into it. And here we are. The game instantly starts, and you've got to pause it immediately if you want to uh, set up your starting situation. So we start with 1800 gold. Gold is gold. I mean, I'm pretty sure everyone is pretty aware of what gold is, so I don't think I need to explain absolutely everything uh, in this game. Uh, next up, we have books. This, it's not really technology per se, but it is how you level up the characters that you have in your country. By characters, I mean people like your king here, Emperor Ionas III of Bursa. No so, he friends. is a, a diplomat style character. We can have a marshal, uh, a merchant, a diplomat, a cleric, or a spy. We can you see the slots here where we can hire new fellas. But this guy here is our diplomatic emperor. 
And if we want to spend these books, what we can do is you can click on this plus button and choose some uh, something to give to him. So at the moment, we've got strategy available, laws available, iron fist and siege craft. And if you're leveling up your king, you're going all the way to the maximum of level three, which is pretty cool. Costs the same amount as to get, say, uh, maybe if we want to hire a merchant, a it trade. takes the same amount of books, 200, to get you to level 1 as it would I've be for you to get to level plan. 3. So it's always worth getting your king to be uh, upgraded kind of first. Uh, so I think what I want to do is actually spend 200 of these books uh, to get myself Laws 3, which gives me... Uh, plus three books in towns and plus five province stability if it is one of my traditions. Well, it's a tradition. Well, if I take yes, it, I love then I can go over to here, the royal family and traditions. And if I had the books the and family. the money, I could choose this as a tradition. You can see how many traditions we have here. Uh, it would cost me a thousand gold and 400 books, and then I would get those bonuses for my kingdom. Everyone following me so far? Cool. We spent some of our books. Let's move on to our religion. Religion is basically a currency that you can use to spend on various actions uh, from your cleric. Things like spreading religion in your land or even spreading religion in someone else's land, which is kind of cool. Uh, basically how that works. Next up we have your commerce. Uh, your commerce determines how many trades you can really do. So if I move over how to my I merchant, we can have him trade with the Sultanate of Rum. This will cost me 50 gold to set up and also uh, utilize 10 of our commerce. So as we only have 23 commerce, it means we can only have two trades or two level one trades set up at any one time. Uh, if we are trading for a long time, I can then upgrade this uh, trade route. Uh, it basically gives me more money, but it also takes a few more commerce. You can get more commerce through various buildings. Things like the market square will give you extra, uh, etc. There's, there's many buildings. We'll get into that soon. Food is pretty self-explanatory. You need enough food to feed all of your people. It's uh, grown in farms. You can build more farms like that. And uh, also it is used by your armies. So say if we go into Nike, if I want to uh, purchase some peasants to garrison this town, uh, they have an upkeep of one food. Uh, next up, we have kingdom levies. And let's pretend for a moment that I don't know what kingdom levies are. I, I totally, totally do. But let's pretend for a moment that I don't. If you hold left alt, uh, you see there everything kind of shows up in gold and you can hover over it and get a little bit of a tooltip uh, to say what things are. And there is also nested tooltips in this game so you could go even further. So say levies. What are levies? Let's have a look. We've got a whole royal library and we can learn what it does. Uh, recruiting any army squad type besides peasants and militia requires some levies and the more professional soldiers are the higher the cost. But as you can see here there's the Roman uh, military here, the Roman infantry, who do actually require some. All right, that's your, 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 I guess it's kind of a mana, right? It's kind of a mana. Moving on to over here. This is the various uh, ways that your country is happy or not with you. The bar at the top is your crown authority. We can improve it by clicking button. Uh, it also costs gold and some of our religious points. Uh, the higher it is, the better your bonuses are, which is kind of cool. Uh, next up, we've got your kingdom's stability. The lower it is, the more likely you are to have rebellions, which kind of suck. Uh, but, you know, you can kill the rebellions and get a population happiness boost, so that's kind of nice. And then underneath that is the various factions within your country and their opinions. So we have the nobility. If they're happy, they'll give you some bonuses. If they're unhappy, they won't. Uh, we got the army's opinion, the merchant's opinion, the clergy's opinion, and the peasantry's opinion. And yeah, that's that's basically it on that one. And I think right now what we need to look at before we finally unpause is buildings. So what we have is four provinces of our own and we need to decide what we want to build and where. 
So in Sardis, we can see what we have in the province itself. We have two castles and a village. We have a lodestone deposit, an iron ore deposit, and some deep forests. With the two castles, it might be worth uh, building the barracks here because I get plus one levy per castle. We, uh, we have the ability to build a barracks here. It might be a good idea. It might not be. We'll, we'll come back to it. Um, if you have villages, things like housing would do very well because you get plus one peasant worker per village. Uh, that's an extra one. So if I have a look at uh, the top area here, it says that in total I would get three peasant villagers and 20% extra population growth, which is the rate at which you know you're, you do, you build the house, but you don't instantly get those villagers. They have to grow over time. And I obviously spend those on recruiting things like peasants. Um, that could be a good idea to build here, but again, there's there's other things. Uh, woodworking, metalworking, because of uh, the various different things that we have in our village as well could be good. Uh, so we have the main building, so things like the woodworking building, the metalworking building, but then we've got all these doodads underneath. Um, and let's find actually something we want to work on. You've got two crop farms. I definitely then want to build in you a crop farm. So we build that crop farm. Boom, done. But then we have the upgrades. We have crop rotation here. Then we have manure pits, which requires me to get crop rotation first. Then heavy plows, which requires obviously both of those. These are upgrades to the crop farm. However, it is upgrades to all crop farms in your entire country. So if I have crop farms in Smyrna and also in Bursa and also Nikea, uh, actually we've got a crop farm here, so I might as well build one there. Um, and then I build crop rotation, it will apply to both. And also the price will go up the more that I have. Uh, and apparently I don't get all the money back if I cancel that building, so we're gonna keep it going. Not a problem. I think we're pretty much good to go. Um, we can look at the entire world map Political with view. Uh, the button that's underneath my face. Um, and unfortunately, it's, it's... I would very much like the ability to zoom out. This is the maximum zoom out possible in this map mode view. I don't, I don't, I don't like that. I think it would be kind of better if that was a bit more zoomed out. But, you know, that's got to make do with what you've got, you know. Um, so, yeah. Other than that, I think what we're going to do Tomorrow is get you to trade with a room. I live for we profit. could get no you friends. to improve opinions. That would cost me 15 gold a, a something. I, I actually don't know how much time passes before that cost comes because it we're, we're working in time. Minutes and seconds. We're not working in weeks or years or anything. So I'm actually not sure how how often that is. We're getting plus 43 a, an amount of Our time. Treasury, my lord. I, again, I, I, don't, I don't know. But you know, it's fine. <laughs> so let's just improve opinions. Uh, that'll get my peasants a bit happier, which means we get more food, we get more morale, and we get more population growth if they People become happy. Need some so that seems fine. And yeah, let us let us keep going uh, until some of our buildings are built. Right, so our buildings are complete. Both of our crop farms are up and running, and we have a little bit more food. Food. So if I wanted to create an army right now, what I'd need to do is to hire myself a marshal. Marshals are the only ones who can uh, lead your armies. Unfortunately, right now we don't actually have the ability to build armies because the uh, only peasants are currently unlocked. We don't have militia because it requires village militia and we just don't have that yet. A village militia. So if I wanted to, I could build this village militia building and uh, we'd be able to get, uh, you know, plus two uh, peasants, sorry, uh, plus two levy per uh, village and then also be able to uh, hire those troops. And I think that might actually be a good idea here. Um, to in Bursa get the village militia. So we're going to do that. And we'll build it there. 
The village militia is done, and I could upgrade it with a training grounds for two extra levy per amount of time. Uh, and then we could eventually get to town watches, which will create the siege defense per village as well. Uh, so these take quite a lot of money, and money doesn't come in supremely quickly. So it's, uh, it's something you have to kind of manage yourself. Uh, we could also build crawl rotation is 1300 now it would have been cheaper if I only had the one uh, crop farm but that's fine Bursa would actually be a pretty good place to build a barracks actually we've got two castles two villages and we've got a pretty high population here as well so I'm thinking I'm pretty tempted to do it it is pretty expensive we don't have the money for it right now the time now. has come to choose our but prince's it's, it's, education it's, it's probably a good idea uh, and our son is actually growing up he is I believe a martial character so what we could do is choose for him to be a navigator or into archery uh, I think we're going to go archery on this one I think uh, archery is probably a good idea. If we had made anything into a tradition, uh, then we'd be able to have chosen that one. So you can, the further you go on, as you get more traditions, you'll be able to more easily custom tailor your uh, your king's uh, family tree Our to what you want. Merchant's opinion has improved. Merchant's opinion has improved. Very nice. As the merchants get more Sire, happy, the more money you get, which is quite delightful. Ungoverned. Oh, that's another thing I've forgotten to do. So, right now, I'm being told that we have provinces that are being ungoverned. And so we've got our Kyrios Diodoros here, and we can get own. him to go and um, govern in one of these provinces. Now, what he does when he governs is he gives me plus one gold in settlements. So we want him to basically be in the province with the most settlements to get the most money. Uh, he also gives me plus one, depending on character level, uh, plus one commerce. So getting him to a high level and in a province with lots of villages is pretty nice. So I think I'm going to put him in... Somewhere with lots of villages for later. I mean, Bursa is the best place for him then. But right now we have there the Emperor no in friends. there. And he's giving me gold and commerce. And yeah, he's pretty good where he is. So maybe for now we'll just have uh, Kyrios My in Nike itself. Many bags of gold. And this let's city go. shall become the leading trade center. Doesn't in the get world. there immediately. It does take some time, but you know, once he's there, he's good. So right now we see Rum is actually crossing our land. We have received a diplomatic I'm not sure message. why. So uh, we'll see what's going on. So Rum, we can go and talk to them. Click on their province. Click on their flag. And we can see what they're doing. They are not actually at war with anyone, so I actually don't know what they're doing over here. Uh, they may be helping out someone else with rebels, potentially. Or maybe it's just the fastest way for them to get over here from where they were, because crossing a river actually does take quite a bit of effort. Another thing that's happened is Bulgaria wants me to help them against the Latin Empire. Uh, they've already r managed to acquire the support of Hungary, which is kind of tempting now, then. Uh, if uh, I, I do kind of want to go to war, but I don't really have too many troops. If they got the support of Hungary, I think then I might do it because the world at your fingertips. Hungary's pretty big and Bulgaria's pretty big and the Latin Empire isn't. So I think I'm going to try this. We're going to accept that. And that means it is a good time to build an army. So let's grab ourselves a marshal. And we're going to have him uh, appear in Bursa. Your orders. Oh, we're going to pop him in home. the uh, province itself. He has a amount of supply which will run out as he moves around the map and not in a city. And we can hire squads to his army. So I'm thinking, you know... Militia is probably the best option here. They're cheap. They're not that bad. I mean, they're not good, but they're not terrible either. They're certainly better than peasants. Um, so we're going to grab probably 
three three sounds good because we then ran out of uh, levies. So we built them. That's good. We're we're good. And uh, now I can get my army of fourteen hundred men and bring them out. And maybe we'll go and land in uh, this whatever this village is called. Oh oh, There's of course, like of course, the, the enemy army is here as well. They have way, way, way more men than I do. Hung Hungary, Hung uh, Bulgaria, Hungary, please, please, I, I need your help. I need your help. Burn, burn, burn. Maybe we just ignore him and, and go and burn his land. He's going to do the same to me, so, I mean, it is what it is. I will crush these bugs. Or he might try and come back. Which is probably what he's going to do. Is he going to get here in time? Probably. So how long until you guys get here? I might need your help. I don't think I am going to get there in time. So I'm going to stop plundering. Get back on the boats. And get out of... Oh, can I, yeah, let's get out of here. As you wish. We're marching. Obviously, it takes much less time to land on your own in your own territory than it does to land on hostile territory, but you know it's 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 still dangerous. Uh, so as I said earlier, we've got now the trade opportunity to expand the trade, which is going to cost us a bit of money. It's going to cost us a bit of commerce, but we're going to make more money from that commerce. Uh, at the moment, we're making 18 from trade. I bet this will turn to profit. Uh, I believe it takes you a bit of time, of and then we'll up. be able to see how much money we make. We're also going to grab ourselves another militiaman. If you insist. And We've another thing we could do, merchants. we have 258 books. Requested, my lord. So our marshal here. We are going to get him to get Infantry Tactics, which gives a uh, Defense Squad Resilience of plus 10, which is pretty good. Uh, we'll we'll take it. Ah, right, I got it. Obey. We're going to get back over the strait. Let's see if we can do a bit of plundering. Their army is up here, so there might be time for us to do a bit of plundering. What we definitely need to have happen is the Bulgarians to get in gear, get down here, and actually start participating in this fight. Uh, they're sending over a couple of bowmen and, obviously, the general himself to Kill try and stop me. Are they? No, they're not. They don't care. That's fair enough. So I guess we're just going to start plundering, getting ourselves a bit of money, and with that money, we will be able to maybe fund a bit of our, uh, of our state. Fun, fun some things to do. They're up to 1,200. They used up all the men in Constantinople, then went to Adrianople and bought more. Uh, only a few peasants, but, you know, every little helps. And it might be that they want to come and take me on now. Thankfully, we're going to raid this before they get here. We have pillaged an enemy settlement. And then we're going to oh, escape. We, of our we took 500 gold, 40 supplies, and 50 books. Fantastic Land news. On the horizon. Oh, he's coming over. Yes. That's fun. I'd, I'd really rather you didn't. I'd Some of really rather you stay elsewhere. My lord. Oh, yeah, and of Wait. course, I can get my marshal to govern a province as well. Arrived. When he governs a province, he gives levies, which is kind of cool. Uh, maybe Sardis would be the best one then, because plus one levy in all castles, defend, depending on character level. So yeah, Sardis works. Honor, and Bulgaria's offered a trade agreement. I'll take Our that. Merchant's opinion has improved. The merchants do enjoy that. Uh, we've only got 23 total For commerce, and glory, so it is not worth is it coming. yet to um, actually get ourselves another merchant. What I'm going to do is Destroy get back over the strait, and we're going to try and burn near. another province. This is a castle, so that's not really burnable. What that is, is we would lose. Mm, this man thinks he can Fight beat me. I don't know if he's right. Till the last man. Uh, let's pop up a pause and say... Give him an army plus one morale. That could work. 
If I had 500 books, I could increase my infantry tactics to level 2. Uh, but I think, yeah, we'll go ah, with leadership I now. Skilled now. Kill them all. I'm going to uh, stop the plundering. My leash. We're on our way. Obey. It would be nice if the Bulgarians were here. I don't know why they're not doing anything. May the wind be in our favor. He actually does think he can beat me. Well, with this, I could show you one of the features of this game, which is fighting a battle on the map. Our armies have the upper hand. Well, we'll, we'll try and do this I lead thing. Because one thing we could do is we could just let the battle play out as you like. These guys will fight these guys, end of story. Or we could say, I'll lead, which will bring us into a, a Total War style battle. And it looks like I can do that to stop the other army getting involved. We're probably going to lose anyway. I feel like their army probably is stronger than our militia. Uh, but, you know, we'll see. Maybe we'll win. So, on this little battle, we've got a couple of options. Either we can kill enough of them so that they rout and then we win, or we can go and take these capture points. If we take the capture points, we win. Um, they obviously could take our capture points, uh, and we only have one, so that, that's, that's unfortunate. Um, go what for... Four units of our own. We could spread them out a bit. My life We've is got precious. ourselves our king here. Uh, we could have him get involved as well. Let's go that way. Um, retreat is probably a good idea because they have bowmen and they've got proper infantry. Some light a infantry here. army has joined in battle against us. Oh, okay, cool, 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 cool. Didn't didn't realize these guys were here as well. Um. <laughs> I think we've we're probably certainly like almost yeah, definitely we've lost. This battle is not winnable. <laughs> Be nice if Bulgaria got involved. Um, so I've showed you how war what works. Uh, we can go. We could click him, and he could go over here and start attacking. Uh, we can make him run faster with our. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to retreat. Our soldiers cannot fight any longer. We take we a little bit of a pain, fall back. but we fall back and we get out of there because otherwise our entire army will be wiped out and we kind of can't have that happen. What is your wish? So yeah, we lost actually one full unit, which is not good. It's not what we want. We're just going to get our guys back into Bursa. Um, and I can heal him up with replenish army there, or I could just build myself a new guy. I'm gonna build myself a new guy. So yeah, uh, that sucked. Literally, all I really need to do is is wait really for Hungary uh, and Bulgaria to get involved. Like it'd be nice if that was to happen, or we could probably try and peace out. Right, see, sign separate peace, a white peace. Unfortunately, there's no way for me to tell if they'll say yes or no before I click it. We've strengthened the opinion of our army. No, nope, he he does not want he does not want white peace. Our queen has given birth to a beautiful princess. Hey, we have a princess. We could spend 900 gold to have a feast that would increase the nobility's opinion, or we could just say, "Cool, that that's that's cool. I don't care, but that's cool." Uh, what I think I'll do is Bursa getting a barracks. So we're going to do that. It would be nice to dismiss these militia and have message. them go back in as workers. That would be nice. Uh, Rum wants me to help them against Aleppo. I'm going to decline that one, I think. Though I would there like no to be friends with Rum, at least, increased. not really friends, but I don't want to be enemies with them, because Rum is pretty, pretty huge. Like, they're not small at all. And I'm really focusing all of my energy on Constantinople and Adrianople. Um, so right now, I don't want to my be their enemy, so I'm going matched. to try and improve opinion with them. We have erected I can a new either click this button there. and scroll down, find Rum, or I can click on them like this... Then I've click the to improve relations, plan. and it will automatically find room. Uh, it's going to be an upkeep of 20. I am off to make some new and friends. And we'll be able to make them a bit more happy. 
Uh, what we can do is grab some sword smiths as well. That seems like a really good idea. Get ourselves some Varangian guards, which are actually really good troops. Uh, these guys, kind of not good troops. So we're going to be dismissing these. Right now, they're just costing me upkeep, and they're just they're just not very Sire, good. Our prince is now ready to join. Prince the is all grown court. up. We're going to give him infantry tactics, and we can actually. Oh, he's a merchant. I was not aware of that. He's a merchant, and I gave him infantry tactics. Well, that's a mistake on my part. What I will do is build a uh, crop rotation to give us more food. Sire, we have completed yeah. an upgrade. The swordsmith is complete, so now what we can do is, if I had the money, which I don't, we can get some Varangian guards. They're 570 gold per, which is pretty expensive, but they are cheaper in workers. They're only one versus the three of the militia, uh, which is kind of cool. They do cost more food upkeep, but they are much, much better troops. Uh, melee attack of 25, melee defense of 75 versus the, uh, the 12 and 12 of the militia. We can also get light infantry, um, which are same melee attack, but nowhere near as high uh, defense stats. And then also, you know, they're, they're fine. They're just, you know, the ranking guns are just really, really good. And then if we really wanted to splurge, we'd need to get uh, more buildings and get the master weaponsmiths and heavy armor smiths. We could build some Roman infantry, but that requires the Royal Armory uh, with the Master Weaponsmiths and the Heavy Armor Smiths. So that's that's a 10,000 investment just to get there. We obviously don't have that much money. Uh, what I will do in Bursa, because we have two villages, I'm going to build some houses. Houses are great. They increase the amount of workers you have, which can increase the amount of men you have in your enemies. army. It's quite nice. And the war is over. The war is over with the Latin Empire, so we are at peace. Which is good to know. Um, what we could do is just hire this guy anyway, just so that he can be a governor of Smyrna. I will last piece of gold for you. And if I had ten spare commerce, we could trade with Bulgaria as well. A new construction has been finished, my lord. Now, with our houses done, what we can do is build some. Uh, aqueduct, which increases the happiness of the province. Uh, we could build some brothels to get a bit more money and happiness. Um, I think the population growth is pretty important, so we're going to go with aqueducts. And then that means this, this, this amount of troops, they grow faster, and then we can put them into our armies faster for when we build an actual army of actual soldiery instead of these militia, and we will uh, we'll go back to war with the Latin Empire and retake Constantinople for the true Roman Empire, which is clearly clearly. We have us. improved our relations, with but the that'll kingdom. be in a future episode. Because for right now, I'm going to put a cut in here. Thank you also very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it, and I will see you in the next one. Bye bye. If you liked the video, please help me out and hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. Maybe leave a comment down below too, it really does help out the channel. If you have the means and are willing to, there's a link to my Patreon in the description below. It's the best way to support me and the effort that goes into creating the content you've just watched and hopefully will continue to watch, and allows me to focus more on making videos without the stress and worry of another meteor striking my channel, be it hacks, demonetization, or the third adpocalypse. You can also support me by heading over to Twitch and following there, or joining my Discord and being an active member of the community. All those links are in the description below. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you in the next one.